We will, uh, the choir will sing O Canada. We're still asking a uh, congregation to just hum quietly behind your mask as uh, singing is uh, one of the things that is, is uh, most risky to do. But the choir will sing O Canada.
shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we shall remember them. We have uh, two bulletins, a white one and a blue one. We ran out of white ones. Um, if you have a white one, um, you can follow along at the uh, opening page. And if you don't, you will remember, I know. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Welcome to you, whether you are joining us in person or whether you are joining us from afar at home. Uh, we welcome you on this Remembrance Sunday. We are very honored to have members of the Legion and the Color Party uh, to help us in our act of remembrance and to be with us in this service. We are very, very blessed to have them. And it's wonderful to have you back because I know it's been a few years because of COVID, but I am so glad that we were able to get you back here. Um, you make all the difference to this service. We continue with the choir who will sing our opening hymn. with our colic for purity on the opening page of the white bulletin. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. 
and write both these your laws in our hearts, we beseech you. reading from the epistle to the Romans. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We say together the words from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because, because he, he has, has heard, heard my voice and my, my supplications. supplications because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. 
O Lord, I pray, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord protects the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call your servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Just before I begin a uh, sermon, I've asked Sheila if she would read the poem in Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders field. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Of course, this being the Sunday before November the 11th, as always, we are marking it as Remembrance Sunday. And so, uh, as I said before, we are honored to have the color party here and members of the Legion uh, who make a difference to us uh, each year to help us commemorate this day. Uh, today is a day for remembrance. What does that mean? And how can we adequately remember? Well, remembrance is a word that we use each week in our celebrations of Holy Eucharist. When we come to the words where Jesus spoke at the Last Supper, Jesus tells us to eat the bread of communion and to drink his blood in remembrance of him. If we break down the word remember into re and member, we get the sense of what Jesus means. Jesus knows that in remembering him in the Eucharist, we are remembering him. That is bringing him once again into our membership. That's what the word means. Both Roman Catholics and Anglicans and many others believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Because in some mystical way, our weekly act of remembrance helps us to understand that Jesus is in our midst, even today, even here and now. In fact, Jesus lives within us and eating his body in the Holy Eucharist helps us to realize this. So what about Remembrance Sunday then? 
What does it mean to us? I hope that this day is more than a chance for us to recall the fact and the horror of war, but allows us to bring into our membership now the men and women who made the supreme sacrifice in war and gave up their lives so that we could live peaceful lives today. People who used to live but who have long been dead can be brought back into the memories of those living. And that's what we're doing today. That is a sacred duty which is before us today. It's not easy. There are fewer and fewer people living today who have strong memories of those who were lost in the first two world wars. But then there have been many who have died in the decades since those wars, in many other wars and conflicts. Both of my grandfathers fought in the war, but they have since died. In fact, one of my grandfathers fought in both wars, or at least he attended the first war. He was too young to join. He lied about his age, ended up in the front in France, was scared to death, and one day when, he, when the platoon was all formed up, the officer commanding called him in front of everybody and read a letter from his mom. <laughs> uh, my grandfather said that he was never so embarrassed nor so grateful because they sent him home right away. He still got a medal, even though he's only there for a couple of weeks. My father-in-law, who is 97 and next month will become 98, is still living. And he fought in the Second World War. And it's only been in the last decade or so that he shared with us some of his memories. Like many people who've come back from war, many don't want to talk about it. But he remembers some of the boys who gave up their lives in the war. And he saw them giving up their lives. Perhaps this difficulty of bringing individual men and women into memory is why war poetry has become more and more important to me. And I'd like to read to you a poem by Bill Mitten called The Crosses. I stood there before the crosses, glowing white in row on row. Every one a young life cut short, as the names upon them show. The dates they died below the names tell of wars now past and gone. Passchendaele, the sum, and Mon, of battles fought and lost or won. History remembers, as it should, those men who fought and died, whilst for their families left behind a dull sorrow tinged with pride. The faces of boys held now in sepia who died in days long gone, yet living on in memories and hearts still holding on. Yet despite the hurt and grief here, what with horror makes me feel is that when I look behind me, there are more new crosses growing still. And this last verse is another reason why we have to remember now. We remember those who gave their lives because we don't want their sacrifice to have been in vain. We don't want the new crosses to be growing still. Jesus, in today's reading, says that there's no greater love than to give up one's life for one's friends. <coughs> the men and women who we remember certainly gave up their lives, their future, their own memories, and they did it for their own families and friends, yes and even to people they never knew, like us. They gave up their lives to defend the life that we have. There are really two sides to remembrance. One has to do with remembering the people and their deeds, but the other has to do with keeping faith with them and their deeds. 
Remembrance is only significant if we continue to strive for the principles for which they died. As Lieutenant Colonel John McRae's poem in Flanders Fields go, to you from failing hands we throw the torch, be yours to hold it high. How can we do this? This Remembrance Sunday can really only truly bring them back into our membership if we carry forward this day and the next day and the next our actions, our actions holding the torch. To keep faith with those who died, we must make decisions for peace and justice in our day-to-day -day lives because war is the result of injustice and violence. To honor those who gave their lives in war, let us be peacemakers. I want to conclude by reading to you a poem of a 14-year-old boy, Joshua Dyer, who was tasked at school to write a poem for Remembrance Day. An hour later, without any help, he wrote this. One thousand men are walking, walking side by side, singing songs from home, the Spirit as their guide. They walk toward the light, my Lord. They walk toward the sun. They smoke and laugh and smile together, no foes to outrun. These men live on forever in the hearts of those they saved a nation truly grateful for the path of peace they paved. They march as friends and comrades, but they do not march for war. Step closer to salvation, a tranquil, steady core. The meadows lit with golden beams, a beacon for the brave. The emerald grass untrampled, a reward for what they gave. They dream of those they left behind and know they dream of them forever in those poppy fields. There walks 1,000 men. And now we continue. If you have a white bulletin at the bottom of the second page as we stand and say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. standing, sitting, or kneeling, as is your custom. On this Remembrance Sunday, let us bring before God of peace our prayers for the world, the Church, and all his people. Merciful God, we pray for peace in our hearts and homes, in our nations and our world. The peace which is your will the peace which we so badly need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember today, O Lord, all those who have died in any kind of war throughout your world, soldiers in battle, peacekeepers in areas of conflict, innocent people killed in all forms of senseless violence throughout the world. To re today, we remember especially those victims of the two world wars including those close to us or to our parents and grandparents. We remember those who came home injured and whose lives were forever changed. 
we remember those whose loved ones never returned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering the conflicts of the past and the sacrifices which were made, we pray for a world where war is still a grim reality. Lord, as we remember those who have lost their lives, help us to renew our fight against cruelty and injustice, against prejudice, tyranny, and oppression. Still, we cry out to you in the darkness of our divided world. Let not the hope of men and women perish. Let not new clouds rain down upon the earth. Lord, hear our prayer for the multitudes in every country who do not want war and are ready to walk the path of peace. May, they voice, may their voice be heard and may they not lose heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the leaders of the nations at this time, asking you to pour out your spirit of reconciliation on them. Give strength and courage to those who bear heavy responsibilities for the peace of the world. We pray also for the Christian Church, called to witness to your love in this generation. We pray for Susan, our Bishop, and all clergy and people in our diocese. We pray also for the principal, faculty, students and staff of the Vancouver School of Theology, and the principal, dean, faculty, students and staff of Martin Luther University College. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Merciful God, we lift up to you all those who have asked for our prayers, those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit, remembering especially Jane Ross, Jane Gatke, Jeff Smith, Cheryl Clark, Keith Braithwaite, Joseph Moore, Jody Cocker, Corinne Newell, Marion Conlon, Vic Burden, Jim Glass, Linda Sutton, Gerald Taylor, Steve Semmet, Alec Dickerson, Edith Walsh, Elsie Mae Scott, Ron Knapp, David, Ross, Amanda, Pam Kutcher, Lorna Devage, and others we hold in our hearts. We pray also for family, friends, and residents in long-term care, for doctors, nurses, hospice workers, and caregivers, and others known to us alone. We pray also for all frontline workers who continue the relentless fight against COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this day of remembrance, our hearts and prayers go out to all who mourn the loss of those we have loved. Help all those who are bereaved to find the same consolation that in knowledge of your love, they may honor the past by looking to the future. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. In the glow of our Paschal candle, we bring before God all those who have died, remembering especially Ethel Bird. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, finally, a prayer for ourselves that we may all put our confidence in you. O oh Lord, you know we are often filled with fear and foreboding. Give us courage and deepen our trust. You are a rock which nothing can shatter. On you we can place the whole weight of our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I just want to say a few announcements. Uh, once again, a great thank you uh, to the color party, uh, including Murray Sutherland, uh, Dan Lozon, uh, Robert Graham, Alex Zanesco, and Alex Lundy. And also a great thank you to Graham Young, our trumpeter, who, who uh, has graced us uh, by playing, uh, uh, accompanying all the music, but especially the last post in Reve. So thank you so much for being back with us again, Graham. I just want to say a little bit about the wreaths. We didn't have the procession of the wreaths as we normally do. We wanted to sort of minimize um, the only ones who processed were our beautiful color party. <laughs> I wa wanted to let them to, uh, to, have, um, to, to uh, have center stage. But the wreaths, the center wreath, of course, is for uh, those who died in war. And, but there's another, it was not only men who died. Many women gave their lives and served as well. And uh, the blue wreath is in memory of uh, the women who uh, gave of themselves and sacrificed for war. And then the small little wreath is for the children, the children who suffered in war. So many of them lost parents, or else they had parents come back you know, years later and didn't recognize them and, uh, and suffered as well. So those are, are what the three wreaths are about. I want to make some more announcements. Uh, this is, today is the last chance for us to uh, sign up for the trivia night. Uh, we're having a trivia night. It's uh, $25 uh, per person um, and you sign up online. It's a Zoom event uh, but it's to raise money for our refugee family and they are on the cusp of coming. It's been two years waiting but we've been told their file is now complete, all the background checks have happened, their health is done, etc. So uh, very soon we will hear a date, we hope within a month or, or, or maybe six weeks, that they will be flying here. So uh, why not join us for our trivia night? Um, it, uh, it happens on, uh, on Friday, uh, November 12th at 7 p.m. Please note that uh, their gingerbread churches, chocolate bark, and uh, cards are being sold for El Ogar. And please do look to the online bulletin uh, to find out how to do that. Also, this Friday, uh, November 12th at 7 p.m. as well, is our Teze virtual service. It's up by uh, 7 p.m., but you can watch it anytime because it's, it's posted as a YouTube video. Uh, we're having our tortier sale. And as you leave, you can pick up a little flyer. Uh, you can fill it out and bring it to the office. We ask you not to fill it out and leave it here today. We don't want it to get lost. So uh, take it home. You can phone, you can email, or you can fill out the form and, and bring it back. Also, please note that the next St. Luke's Advocacy Group is November the 20th at 10 a.m. Once again, it will be by Zoom, and it will be Jane Nye who will share her extensive experience with the fair trade movement. So please do join us for that as well. As always, we have our Zoom coffee hour, or coffee half hour, from 11.30 till noon today, a time to get you home to brew your coffee and then join us on Zoom. I hope we will see you there. And uh, now we will have uh, the offer.
prayer over the gifts is on page five of the blue bulletin, and then we continue on page four of the white bulletin. Let us pray. Gracious and righteous Lord, we are united in the love of Jesus Christ. Accept all we offer you this day, and bring us with all your faithful people who have gone before us into his eternal glory, who is Lord now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us eternal life. Therefore, joining our voices with the whole company of heaven, we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. On the night he was handed over to supper, after supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with Luke and all your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Dear friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people unseen yet present with us now. Let us pray. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome your presence in us and together proclaim our love for you. With our hearts, minds, our souls, and our strength, with the saints we worship you, with the angels we adore you, with your whole church we proclaim your reign. Come to us and make us one in you. For the communion, I invite you to uh, just lift your mask. Uh, I will come to you. Uh, if you wish to receive communion, you hold your hands like this. We're just receiving bread alone. Uh, if you just wish a blessing, just cross your arms in front of you like this. And uh, please just lift the bottom of your mask to receive communion and then replace your mask again.
continue uh, with the prayer after communion at the top of page six of the blue bulletin. Let us pray. God of love, may the death and resurrection of Christ, which we celebrate in this Eucharist, bring us with the faithful departed into the peace of your eternal home. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our hope and our salvation. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. sing the royal anthem. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.